take uh, turns commenting on that. Dan, are you first? To be honest, tonight I had more fun playing TA than I have in any scrim that I've ever played with TA. Because it actually, yeah, absolutely. It actually showed, it was skill for skill. It was, are you good in this class or are you not good in this class? It wasn't, let me go hop in this god vehicle and run around and blast everybody. It was seven <laughs> versus seven people. It wasn't any, any god mode crap. It was just straight up tribes. How good are you? At one point, our offense just sat and literally walked the flag back and killed everybody because we were able to chain people down. And no one was relying on vehicles or crutches like that. So I had more fun tonight than I have in the past three months playing TA. All right. oh, interesting. Zoid, That's, your thoughts on that? Yeah. Uh, I thought it played a bit slower. I mean, we obviously did stack D because we weren't breaking their own. We figured that was our best shot at taking the third map and extending it. But I think that the vehicles are overpowered as they are, but I think that they are a valid part of tribes that just need to be tweaked and some rules need to be implemented to make them a little more fair. Well, hopefully high res Bard is here and he can uh, inform us a little bit more about things like that. We did mm. notice that the flag bug Bart was not fixed tonight. There was a uh, the flag bug reared its ugly head at least once, I believe. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, still on the same path of that one. If someone can figure out how to make it happen, like, one in three times, hell, if you can figure out how to make it happen one in ten times, uh, that'll definitely help us figure out what the problem is. I mean, it's like, we've had, uh, it was not something that was specifically going to be addressed, but I know that, you know, if we got any kind of reproduction case through support, or through a QA that we would have, we, you know, we are actively looking to fix that, but it is not something that was, should have been, I guess, fixed in this patch. Um, uh, I would have loved for it to be, but it wasn't, I do, it wasn't specifically like, you know, done. I do have more bad news. I didn't hear there were nitrons going through the terrain also tonight. Yeah, and I want really? to ask that to both uh, players, uh, Nanner and Zoid. Uh, the, the nitron nerf or the changes in nitron, uh, how much of a difference did that make? Uh, Nanner, at least one time we saw you reach down to reflexively throw a nitron and you knocked the flag out of your own hand. Well, what happened with that, and this is the honest truth, I promise you, I'm not trying to make up for a super play. I, right on, real talk. I was yeah. talking to Maka, and he was, I said, Maka, throw it, and I had planned on nitroning to get speed and then grabbing the flag on my up jet to get out fast. But the ah. throw on the nitron is so slow that I literally sat there, hit the hit the button and turned, and then as I as soon as I grabbed it, I threw the nitron on my feet. Actually, if you had watched later in the scrim on the same map, <laughs> I have a route where whenever I get out full health, I instinctively turn around and throw a nitron, and I did that, but I quickly whipped the mouse around and threw it off into nowhere so that I didn't <laughs> nitron myself. I can confirm from the Tao voice speak that he was planning on nitroning before he got the flag and actually knocked it out of his hands by accident. So. Okay, so you totally meant that. Okay, uh, Zoid, uh, did they make a, a difference to you as a capper as far as the nitrons go? I don't think it makes a huge difference. Uh, I did switch back to the light spin fuser so that if I did need to get some sort of speed boost on the way home, I could do that. But outside of altering a few routes where, like Nainer said, if you're out full health, sometimes you want a nitron, I don't think it really affects too much. I definitely had a casual friend of mine commenting today that he was going to be doing the same thing because he couldn't afford the damage from the, um, the crossbow anymore. Yeah, it takes you below 500 with one hit, so that's kind of that threshold you don't want to get below. Now, especially when you got chasers of the caliber on the two teams tonight, uh, you want to keep all the health you can get. It's weird with Nitron. I was saying that we were, we were uh, pubbing this pubbing. afternoon, and I think I instinctively pop the flag out of my hands five or six times before I remembered, oh yeah, I can't do that anymore. is isn't learning so fast, everybody. <laughs> it's a habit for sure, but, uh, so ultimately, I mean, it's it's interesting that we had these two teams play tonight. I was glad to watch this match because as competitive play develops, we definitely have two teams here that are very, very good and on very opposite sides of how we think competitive play should take place, so. Yes. Uh, it's kind of cool, and, and I guess that's going to be the real challenge for, for high res uh, or for us all, is to figure out, you know, who's who's right or meet in the middle or if we should meet in the middle. I mean, it, it's going to be hard to figure out where competitive play is going to go. I mean, uh, what what are your what are your thoughts on that, guys, as far as how you really think it's going to end up? Well, in the interviews that I've given, I've been asking players and captains and so forth whether they think that these things, these, these strikes and strikes and tanks should cost more in comp mode. Like, they cost, like three or four times more, you'd see fewer of them and they'd be kind of a wow moment. Hey, they, they spent money on an orbital. You could also see a team credit pool possibly, so the team would have to be citing as a group whether they're spending their money on. Uh, and you wouldn't see constant strikes on the stand to get the flag off. You'd only see it once in a while. 
uh, and it would be a big decision by the team. Because they have to decide between upgrading their turrets, upgrading, buying tanks, and whatever. So if it costs more, because we're accumulating a lot of money in these games, that's a possibility for making those things stay in the game, but also uh, uh, not being such a huge dominating factor like they are right now. Because people would have problems where they would they would kill a tank, and the person who was in the tank would just buy another one, because they've gotten that much money by that, by that point. What do you guys think of the concept, um, uh, Nanner and, and Zoid, what do you guys think of the concept of the naked spawn? You know, we've talked about it, lots of teams have talked about it, uh, Bart's actually talked about it a little bit, I'll let him comment on that as well, but uh, the idea of actually playing comp in, in naked spawn, or at least trying it out where everybody spawns in, I don't know, soldier, and then the gens matter, you got to go to an inventory station to, to suit up, and if you don't got your gens, you don't got your suit. Uh, my only fear with that is that it might slow the game down, but we've seen games like Tribe 2 Classic 7 Man take off with some very deep gameplay. I, and I think that would allow for a better skilled team to win and, well, I guess a better coordinated team to win and then a better skill, a more skilled team to react. You know what I'm saying? So a more skilled team might be able to do more in a seven man soldier loadout than a team that isn't as skilled in a seven man soldier loadout, but a more coordinated team will be able to take down those gens and uh, try to, you know, uh, work their strategy to their advantage if they don't have the better uh, duelers or skilled players. So you don't think tonight played out more slowly than usual? Mm, not in the game, no. I, I mean, maybe to watch it, but honestly, I think when you have a Shrike flying around taking down cappers from across the map, when you have a Shrike flying in clearing the flag at will, or a tank clearing the flag at will, I think it's not fun for the people playing it. Honestly, I don't really care if the people watching it like it, because if I'm not having fun playing it, then why would I play it? You know what I mean? Like, it's, That's fair. it's, it's fun to watch sure. MMA, but I'm not going to go in there and take those shots, you know what I'm saying? It's stupid. So, I don't know, that's just my thoughts on it. You scared? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Nader. Nader. Zoid, Nader's though, Nader's well, your, your thoughts player, on that, so. Zoid, because I know that you guys have uh, said that you'll play under any rules, anytime, whatever. Uh, as far as the vehicles, or are they naked spawns? As far as any of it, as far as uh, does infantry only uh, slow the game down, we'll say. Uh, well, in regards to naked spawns, I didn't play any of the older tribes games, so I haven't actually played that and don't really probably have an educated opinion. But I don't know so much that removing vehicles uh, slows the game down. I think the issue that we saw tonight is when we were running infantry against their first heavy D, the only response that we really saw, because we obviously weren't really cracking that... Uh, defense was to return with a heavy D. And my worry is that when you start seeing stuff like that, vehicles are actually a very powerful counter to that. Uh, when you can roll a tank in, when you can roll a shrike in, then uh, you can just counter that so much easier. And I do think that spectators actually are highly important for the success of esports, because if you don't have the spectator pool, if you don't have all those people playing the game, then you never really take off with the big leagues, and you end up with uh, nothing against TWL, but TWL is a free league. And uh, you end up with a lot of TWL competition, but you don't get the bigger leagues with the uh, larger prize pools. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, Bart, if you're listening to us, uh, how do you meet that in the middle? I mean, how, how do you appease uh, the, the spectators as well as the people who are actually playing this to give us something to spectate? Well, um, I would say ideally uh, you would have vehicles that were somehow no, I, you know, it's hard to say because the vehicles, you know, you want them to be stronger than just the infantry guy, but you still want them to feel like there's some kind of risk reward to them. So ideally, I think that would be the case. You would have a set of vehicles or I, I, I don't know what an, an analogous thing would be in some other kind of game, but, you know, you have these vehicles that, you know, didn't seem to have these problems or were at least difficult enough to get that uh, competitive players felt like that there was enough buildup and enough, you know, kind of things that you had to give up to get them, I think is part of the issue. Um, well, um, sorry, go ahead. Oh, me? Oh, okay. Yes, um, go ahead. Um, yeah, so uh, I think so perfectly it would be that. Um, now, as to what makes a better spectator game versus a better game played, I think unquestionably that the strikes are really awesome to watch. Um, now, that, of course, should not come at the expense of the players that are playing it, right, should do it because they like it. And, you know, that that is kind of primarily, you know, people having fun in my game is like, that's that's really, you know, 
the way I see it, you can pivot around fun when you make a game, right? The game can be fun and, you know, easy and fun and competitive. So, but the most important part is people have fun, right? So we want you guys to have fun. And if strikes make the game not fun for you, well then, you know, there, I want to put in place, you know, the ability to start figuring out how to make them feel like they belong in a 77. I think the problem is mainly in small team sizes, the strikes are just so strong. Now tanks, you know, a bit different, you know, uh, some people think they're incredibly underpowered, some people overpowered, but I don't know, it's really up to you guys. I mean, I encourage you I'm to not sure if I've asked you directly what you think about the possible higher prices, if it would be possible to have someone spend a lot of credits on a, on a vehicle and then not be able to afford the next one as soon as it dies because it costs so much. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's like, that will be an option for with custom servers. You will be able to set individually the price of strikes. And why is it strikes. such a... Why is it such an issue? You know, one thing I'm just thinking of sitting here, you know, I mean, I played Tribes 1. Nobody really used vehicles in Tribes 1. Uh, I played Tribes 2. Vehicles were used for a while. And vehicles were at no cost in Tribes 2. You just walk up to the vehicle pad, you get yourself a vehicle. All good to go. Want a bomber? There you go. Uh, you know, and and, and <laughs> they weren't, they, you know, they were used. Some teams used them with, with some success. Some teams didn't. I don't know the vehicles really were a factor long-term in Tribes 2 competitive play. Now all of a sudden in Ascend, it's a huge issue. Well, um, team size matter there because for live events you need a small team size. And uh, I, I guess when you have a vehicle as strong as Strike and tries to Ascend, it's hard to dedicate someone to, to, to handle that when the Strike makes the person flying it so much more mobile, so much more powerful. And by the time you kill it, they can afford another one. I think right there, uh, the credits is really the issue that I see with them. If you look at the cost of something like an orbital strike, that's 10,000 credits. You look at the cost of a shrike, that's 4,000 credits. And I think that a shrike is infinitely more powerful than an orbital strike. So something's not quite right there. When you can choose to buy two and a half shrikes compared to one orbital, it's just no contest. That's right. Um, so, like, basically the... I don't remember what the values were. I'll, I can look once more if you want to know, but I mean, like... I arbitrarily set multipliers on that stuff for like the very, very first like test of custom servers. And it was like strikes were, I think, 5x, something like that, of what they are now. And the, my, the idea, my idea really around this is that eventually we'll be able to move into a system for competitive play in which you have a pooled credit system for your entire team. It's no longer individual and they're, they're calculated differently and come in slower. Um, so that you're spending a team's resources on, and there's trade-off there. Like that's a really interesting piece of kind of what is quote unquote the meta game that that is not in there. Um, that I think I think would be really cool. I don't know, you know, what that takes on our side to do that, but that's something I've been talking about, you know, for a long time. It's something that we we think would be a good idea. Yeah, I think that would solve a lot of problems personally. And then you know just readjusting prices. So you know, there's also seen some stuff like Son of Gohan or Son Gohan, who's in the chat tonight. As I'm talking about, like, what if, you know, it takes the generator to be leveled up to buy, you know, the grab cycle and the tank and the strike from the, the vehicle pad. And kind of that same kind of limited limitation that your generator basically has to be level three or higher to get a strike and to get your turrets above that same level, that kind of stuff. Like, so there's, I think, which is also a cool idea. And, you know, and then readjusting prices based on that. So I don't think anything's off the table in terms of how to make those vehicles, like, if, if they don't get touched again in terms of balance, like, that stuff is still on the table. It's not like we're saying, I, it's not like I'm of the opinion that there is not necessarily there's anything wrong, but that there is something better. Uh, oh, to okay. get back to your question, Brewman, historically, Tribes have has always had no vehicle maps. Like, there were lots of them. There were lots of vehicles that are not maps that had no vehicle pad to buy those things on. And when sure. they came back, sort of, in Tribes 2, those were like 14 man team sizes, so there was a lot of ways you could handle that. In seven on seven, it's a lot harder. People weren't able to dedicate the amount of uh, manpower to take care of the, the pad of the generator or, or kill the vehicles. Well, whatever rule changes people want to experiment with, uh, I'm cool with it as far as, uh, and, and I think we're interested in seeing where the game goes here on Tribescast, you know, the games that we uh, show. You know, we're willing to see uh, what people want to try and uh, just like tonight, you know. No, no strikes, no vehicles. I like the idea I heard uh, that Bart just brought out that, uh, you know, you need to have a level 3 or even a level 4 gen before vehicles become viable in a match. Mm -hmm. that, 
that's a pretty cool idea because it's going to take a coordinated team effort to put all that cash into getting it up to that point. Uh, maybe make it more expensive to do that. You know, it's 1500 to 2000 I think, to upgrade the gen each time now. Maybe make that more expensive and make that level 4 gen a team effort to get it. A lot of cash. Uh, and then make vehicles viable. That's that's a pretty cool idea. Maybe a little too complicated, but I like the sound of it when you said it. Yeah, well, let's, a... ask, uh, let's ask Nan, or uh, is there anything about the game, if you could change, if there's one thing, what would it be? If there's one thing about the game, I could change anything. Sure. Wow. <laughs> you got to read the state of the shaft spot before you answer, man. <laughs> oh, man, dude. Uh... Stronger Jets. Well, I don't really like the skin on the spin fuser that much. <laughs> uh, but in all honesty, for co competitive play, I think the biggest issue right now is balancing vehicles. I mean, I, I don't think strikes will even be an issue in competitive play, because I think for the most part, most people are agreeing that they're pretty stupid. But oh, there's, yeah. I think that the vehicles are just way too overpowered it makes it unfun and the i don't know dude I, i'll sit here for the next 30 minutes if you really want to list off stuff but vehicles is my <laughs> number one thing right now manor have you read my post dude he put i literally i don't touch the forum so i'm gonna be completely honest <laughs> i just show up and play uh, well, I, I mean no, no I, I just i posted um but i'm calling the state of the chat line uh current and future stuff around the business of esports as well as uh Balancing gameplay, so um, I would encourage uh, you to read that and see about that stuff. I okay. wanted to ask Zoyberg. I don't think I understood his. Well, I can read it on the screen said, if you guys want. When he said that um, uh, you guys adjusted to Tau tonight by stacking D on the last map to try and take a map, uh, you said that you weren't cracking their D. So what was the thinking behind stacking more D on your side to try and win? Uh, we were sure trying to extend it. The, uh, we on Arcs got a couple caps back where we just destroyed that shield. I came in, I dodged a couple people, and I got back. And we figured that hopefully we'd be able to try something like that again. And then I actually, I really screwed up the exit on two routes that I thought I should have had home. I just hit the, uh, on dry dock, I hit the lip of the base stand after I'd grabbed the flag and pretty much gotten out clear going pretty fast and sent myself flying straight back at them. So, so you, if I had, I gotcha. you stack D to make more opportunities for yourself to get home, just by uh, circumstance, I guess. Yeah, that was basically. Because, honestly, we really felt like our offense wasn't doing too much tonight, so and, we just and decided you did to. The game, I mean, for a very, very long time on dry dock, so that was uh, <laughs> it, very effectual, at least in that aspect. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was just something we wanted to try. It uh, ended up not working, but we thought it might. I saw well, Tailspin getting a lot of kills, still doing a lot of work for your team. Oh yeah, Tailspin's a oh, monster. Yeah. That's another thing, man. He can see me from across the map. What's up with that, bro? <laughs> and he has no fog on, so what's up? What's going on? I think we all have no fog on. I don't use that, because I have to be able to see the terrain. I don't even mess with my input, dude. I'm not a nerd. <laughs> I think I have fog on. I probably do. For real though, all these snipers have no fog. I've, I've put it on before and you can literally see from your base, and if you know the routes, which there's, I don't know, three per side on each map, I mean like left or right, like incoming. Cause since you can't go out of the out of bounds grid, you can just watch me come in. Oh, there he is. Let me just spot, spam spot in this direction. Oh, there he is. Okay, I'll just nick him down. How oh do you wait, feel there's an infiltrate uh... army. Okay, I'll just suicide, go to the next spawn point. All right, just keep nicking him down. What do you think about spotting right now, Bart? Can it current? It can currently spot through cloak and scramble, right? Um, I think scramble, but not cloak. Do you think that the uh, uh, the cone is too wide? Um, yeah, the tolerance probably could be adjusted. Uh, do I think that, as a blanket statement, that it is too wide? I am haven't really thought about that. I kind of just accept that as a thing right now um but it is certainly not to say that's not like open for discussion i just don't really i don't feel comfortable like giving an answer on how i feel about it because i sure, really sure. haven't considered it i mean I, I the last time i really thought about the spotting was when we kind of thought about the uh when i was uh when like kind of teams started figuring out like how to kind of have it always active in a way you know with, with the rotation and everything 
And I was like, and that's when I last really considered it, you know, like what's what's really the ramifications of this. Um, but I know that it is probably an important thing, but probably, you know, a second order of importance, not as uh, important as some of the things that I think many players feel are uh, going on in the game. Is it true what I heard about uh, multiple patches coming before release, like each week? Yeah, man, we patch each week. We, we always patch each week. It's just that we're really good at justifying, pushing it back to get in more features. Um, but like internally, there's always like, all right, patch this week, except for, for the only one that was really like, all right, you know, we're not, we're, it's gonna be a couple weeks where we patch was um, the big UI change and the class changes and that kind of stuff. That was like, we knew that was gonna be two, almost three weeks to do that one, so. But everything else, yeah, should be weekly. Well, thank you, Bart and Casters. I will peace out and let you guys finish your interview. See you later. Au revoir. User disconnected thank you, Delirium. Well, I think we're probably at the wrap-up point anyway. I must I must say, uh, I was encouraged um, uh, by Nanner at the start of this when you said this is the most fun you've ever had. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to putting this uh, a couple of uh, scrims together and seeing how this plays out a little better. Uh, I, I was a little bit on the negative side of it, I think, uh, but I'm willing to give it a, a bit more of a try. You know, everybody's got to go to long routes now, it seems, to get the speed up. I was a little worried about the Nitron... Uh, once you had the flag not working because it just kind of takes all the short routes away as, as being viable. You know, you, could, you, used to, you used to be able to run improvised routes right. and short routes because you knew you could get away afterwards. Now, it, it, it backs things up a little bit, involves more strategy, but uh, maybe that's not a bad thing. Yeah, I think, I don't know, I'm mixed because it, it kind of kills the cluster play that you would see on Crossfire or Arcs, but at the same time, it requires cappers to hit the routes. Like, there's not as much of a margin for error. So it's really going to separate who the better cappers from the guys who are just kind of mindlessly, you know, memorizing routes and then can't really improvise if they get messed up at all. You know, because before you could just mess up your route a little bit. All right, no problem. There's this. There's a hill right here. Let me thrust, throw a nitron after I grab, and I'll be gone no matter what. Or I can just punt up the middle. Now you really have to hit your hit hit all your hills and uh, make sure that you're on point and be able to kind of improvise a little bit if you do get thrown off by a thumper on the stand or something like that. So I don't know. There's give and take with it, I guess. Certainly warrants further testing, but. Uh... Well, thanks to uh, to both teams tonight for uh, letting us uh, watch the match and commentate the match. I think you guys put on a great show. Yes, Anything indeed. else, um, uh, Winters, uh, Craig, Bart, anybody got anything else for, for Nana or uh, for Zoid? Or if you guys have anything else you want to say or shout outs? Duh! Sure, I got, I'll do some. Always game Let for that. Let him do his thing. Um, well want to thank everybody for sticking around 160 of you. It's been wonderful to hang out with you tonight. Um, and yes, those of you as well that snuck in, uh, maybe from work, or if you are a late night European gentleman or lady uh, coming and hanging out with me today uh, when I streamed about the and all the cool stuff that you get to see in it. Um, I hope you guys like, you know, a lot of the changes we made, as well as, um, you know, kind of the stuff that's coming in the future that I was outlining there. Um, if you want to know up to date all the stuff that I think about tribes and all the matches and all that fun stuff, you can please feel free to follow me on Twitter at high res Bart. Uh, I, would, I would love to have you there and always feel free to engage in conversation on IRC, on our forums, uh, Skype, anywhere you can find me. I'm high res Bart everywhere. So uh, I, would, I would love to talk to you. Uh, SpinFuture.org for all the great coverage on today's patch. And of course, their continued coverage of European scene. And uh, of course, to Tribescast for hosting us tonight, winners and Boomerman for being our loquacious casters for the evening. We do love you, Bart. Uh, <laughs> thank you. The teams, of course, Area 51 and Tau, the Tau Tribe. Uh, shout out to both those guys. They're both on Twitter. You should follow them as well. Uh, check out TauTribe.com, as well as uh, Area 51 is a multi-gaming uh, team, so make sure to check them out as well on their website, which I believe is Area51Gaming.com, although I could be mistaken, but I'm sure Google sure, That's correct. We'll yield it. Ah, there it was. I was right. Okay, great. And uh, we will be, I will be at PAX here pretty soon. Uh, in the uh, kind of first weeks of April, so uh, I look forward to seeing you guys there if you are able to show up as well. And that uh, I guess the last thing to say is that if uh, you are a you know if you guys want to get moving with Game Shrine in the American scene, that those guys are willing to uh, help you out there. They currently run a tournament that will run to a ladder for uh, the European community. This is you know just community run thing uh, in the in the near future, in the near short term, I guess rather if you want to just get things moving right away. They are happy to do that for you, so I want to uh, thank them for offering that service to the Americans as well as the Europeans. And 
Nations Cup uh, will be happening at some point. Check that out on spinfuser.org. Uh, they have a big post about it. They have captains and everything. I'm sure they'll have a big draft stream or something. Who knows? But um, it has been... I think that's it. I think that's enough. There's probably more I could say, but that's probably enough. So uh, That's a lot to get started on. Thanks, man. And uh, I'm Winners with the One, and you can find me at uh, twitter.com slash winners with the one for Tribescast. And Craig, if people want to follow Tribescast, uh, they just click the button, I take it? Uh, yes, you go to uh, twitch.tv slash Tribescast, and you should have a little follow button there. Get an email every time we go live. And uh, if I do recall, we're going to be, uh, hopefully, last time I checked, we were at 695. So hopefully we will hit 700 tonight, which would be epic indeed. Um, if that's not your thing, you can also uh, then follow us or like us on uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash tribescast. Uh, we usually post before we go live, about an hour or two um, before we go live, so you'll be able to see it cool. in your little feed there. Well, definitely follow us, family, because uh, Tribescast is going to be there. We've got our hustle on. I mean, there's a lot going on in the game, and we're going to be here to cover it. And we want to thank uh, both teams, uh, Nanner and Zoid, for staying with us late here. And the legendary uh, Boomer Man. Uh, what a great uh, treat it was to do a show with you, man. It's great. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I feel a bromance coming on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. And as far as that uh, Nation Scott thing, I've got one thing to say. Go Team Canada. Ooh, this could be interesting. We'll have to at least cover the North American bracket, won't we? Yeah, for sure. I know Sato's going to want in on that as well. All right. Well, if anybody else, I guess that's about it here from Tribescast. And uh, I'm sure there'll be games tomorrow and uh, probably Thursday, too. It seems to be a Sunday through Thursday thing, this Tribes thing. And we're glad you could be here with us, y'all. And we'll see you next time on Tribescast. Bang, bang. User